Full body tracking is great. More immersion and expression in social games, expanded gameplay in games like Blade and Sorcery, and plenty of possibilities and ways to use it that are limited only to your imagination. <coughs> but despite all that, it's still a hard sell. Mostly because of the oil baron money you'd need to put down for the trackers in the first place. And if you don't have a flavour of Steam VR facehugger, your very existence will drive up the price by needing some extra base stations on top of that. I'm talking to you, 75% of Steam VR users, including me. Because of that, many alternatives have been popping up recently trying to solve this issue. Now there are plenty of options for full body out there, like Connect, Slime VR, and Mocap for All. But the thing is, some of them just have downright appalling tracking quality, and the ones that don't are either still very expensive or at the time of writing not even available in the first place. At the moment, Vive trackers are the undisputed king of full body tracking, being the only solution capable of providing consistent 360 degree one to one movement in VR. But what if I told you that there's another option out there that you can have today, which is by far and away one of the best alternative full body tracking solutions you can get second only to the Vive trackers. It can have upwards of 10 hours of battery life with the same tracking capabilities as the Vive trackers as well, and for even less money than Slime VR. You might even already have some of the hardware just lying around somewhere in your home too. This here is a tutorial I've made that will show you how to use PlayStation Move controllers in 2021 to directly emulate Vive trackers and eliminate any of the other problems that plague the other full body tracking alternatives. My name is Kai, and let's get into it, shall we? The main program we'll be using today is called the PS Move Service. It's a bit of software that allows your PC to track multiple PlayStation Move controllers in space using PlayStation 3 Eye cameras. Pass three of those six stuff tracked controllers through to Steam VR, and you've got yourself a full fat Vive style full body setup. The PS Move Service is not plug and play, let me make that clear first, but I've made this tutorial to guide you through the first time setup of the PS Move Service and how to get it working with Steam VR. Once you do that, this alternative full body setup only requires about the same per session setup as calibrating a Quest or Quest 2 with regular Vive trackers. So let's begin and get everything hardware wise you'll need out of the way first. Obviously, you'll want three PS Move controllers, one for your hips and the others for each leg. Then you'll need four old PSI cameras to use as tracking sensors to track the controllers, not the inbred Wally lookalike that comes with the PSVR. You can use fewer than four cameras if you really need to, but it's heavily not recommended. The best place to find some cameras and controllers is on eBay or Facebook Marketplace, where you can usually get the controllers for $30 a pop and the cameras for like 5 Look out here for bundles of controllers and cameras going together as well, because they're often significantly cheaper than buying them separately. You're also going to need some cables here as well. The first ones you're going to want are the appropriate mini or micro USB cable for each of your controllers if you don't have any for them already. These will be used to connect your controllers to the PC during setup and for charging. The other cables you'll need are some USB 2.0 extension cables for extending the PSI cameras' pitifully short cables around your play space. At most, that should run you $20 if you're buying everything and not using some of your own. Then, the only thing left is a Bluetooth adapter to connect your controllers to your PC wirelessly. If you don't have some kind of Bluetooth adapter already, this ASUS USB adapter for $10 keeps being recommended for this purpose if you're interested. But if they're not available to you or you want to cheap out, grab anything that looks suitable, because effectively any Bluetooth adapter that's compatible with Windows 10 will work fine here. In total then, you'll need about 4 to 5 USB ports on your PC, so make sure you have enough before you start. If you don't have that though, you could try a decent USB expansion card, but obviously for an added cost. The total here comes out to about $140, which isn't much more than a Vive 3.0 on its own. Pretty good for a full blown 6 point tracking solution if I do say so myself, especially when Slime VR's equivalent offering is over $250, including shipping. The full list of things you'll need will be available on screen now and down in the description. And now that you have everything ready, it's time to actually set it up. We begin with the cameras and the software. We'll set these up together because while you're positioning the cameras, the software will allow you to use a live feed of what they're seeing to make it easier to adjust them. The first step here is to download the software we'll need for this. First, download the PlayStation Move service. Scroll down on the GitHub releases page to this set of assets here and make sure to download the PS Move service zip folder. Then go to download Zardig from its website here. Zardig being the program we'll be using to install our camera's USB drivers. While you're waiting for them to download, make a new folder somewhere so we can put everything into it to keep it tidy and easily accessible. Once everything is all downloaded, move Zardig straight into that new folder. Then create another new folder inside it called PS Move Service or something and extract the PS Move Service zip you just downloaded inside of it. Once you've extracted it, there will be three new folders inside. 
all of the utilities we will need for the PS Move service will be inside of the bin folder, so you don't have to bother with the others. The inside of the bin folder might look intimidating, but you'll only need to use three of these EXEs in this entire tutorial. Those being testcamera.exe, the psmoveconfigtool.exe, and most importantly, the psmoveserviceadmin.exe. This here is the main program that you'll use to track your controllers in VR. At this point, I'd make a desktop shortcut for the bin folder and rename it to psmove. You'll be wanting easy access to this folder a lot, and this will just make it easier. After that, now it's time to move away from your PC and consider where your PSI cameras are going to go in your play space. Before you do anything, you'll want to go over each of your PS4i cameras and rotate the lens barrel to the blue dot option like so, to set the camera's FOV to its highest setting. Then, with your four cameras, you're going to want to mount them in a square-like configuration, as high up in the corners of your play space as possible. Wall mounting them is by far the best option, with the edges of tall furniture being a good backup. But since the cameras don't have standard mounting hardware, the best method for putting them up is to use some generic right angle metal L brackets with some tape to hold the cameras to the top of them. It's an idea to mount them temporarily for now with something like tape, so you can adjust and finalise their positions later. I'm lucky enough to be able to use screws to hold my cameras in place, but if that isn't an option for you, there are a myriad of videos and threads out there full of tips and tricks on wall mounting Vive or Oculus sensors without screws. That topic has been explored to death, and all you have to do is take one look into it for some good ideas. Now, once you've got the cameras roughly where you want them, hook them into their USB extensions, run the cables, and then plug them into your PC. Now it's time to install the drivers for your cameras with Zadig, so go back to your PC, go to the folder we put it in earlier, and open it. The first thing you'll want to do now with that open is go into the Options tab and click List All Devices. Now, the previously greyed out drop down list at the top here should be clickable and be filled with a list of every USB device connected to your PC. Amongst all of that, your four cameras should show up as USB Camera B4.09.24.1 Interface 0. You may see a device with the same name but with Interface 1 at the end instead, but make sure you don't touch these because they're not the devices you want to be installing the drivers for. Now, select an Interface 0 PlayStation camera. In this box here, switch the driver we'll install to libusb win32 with the little arrows on the side, then hit install, reinstall or replace driver, whatever it might say for you. Once that's done installing, check here in the box if the current USB driver is now libusb win32. If it is, go back to the drop down list and do the exact same for the rest of the interface zero cameras on the list. If you need to replug or switch one of the camera's USB ports for any reason, you'll need to click List All Devices again to refresh the list and make sure that the USB driver is still installed just in case it breaks. When you've done that, make sure that every camera has the libUSB driver installed, and with that done, the cameras should be ready and we can go and check that now by going back to the bin folder of the PSMove service and opening the PSMove service admin.exe. The program should now open up, and a bunch of text will begin spewing in this window as the program boots up. This here window is the PSMove service itself, and once it finishes, you should be able to scroll through the word vomit and find a line saying PS3 iCam get devices. The number of devices here represents the amount of cameras it's detected during startup, which should be the number you have plugged in. If this does show some of the cameras aren't being detected, you'll want to try checking them in Zardig if the drivers are properly installed, or you can replug them while the PSMove service admin application is closed. 99% of the time, this will resolve the issue and the cameras will start showing up. But if not, I should have a troubleshooting playlist linked in the description with bite-sized videos I've made going over common issues with PS Move, along with some troubleshooting steps. Now all there is left to do for this section is to access the previews from the cameras and make your final adjustments. So go back to the bin folder now and open testcamera.exe. When the program opens, just type in 40 when it asks you for the initial frame rate and hit enter to confirm. Then when it asks for initial frame width, type in 40 again and hit enter. The views from each of your cameras should now pop up in these convenient little windows here, which you can use to check how your cameras are behaving and determine if you might need to switch their USB ports. Now that you have the views up and they look stable, you can use them to make sure that the cameras have good coverage from all corners of your play space. A good tip for getting that is to ensure that each of your cameras can at least cover up to your waist on the opposite side of the room, while also covering the corner it's in in a decent enough capacity as well. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect as you can see from the views of mine, but this is roughly what you should aim for yours to look like. Now we can move on to pairing your controllers to the PC. Simple stuff to begin with, just plug in your Bluetooth adapter, check if Bluetooth in Windows is turned on, then install the drivers for the adapter if Windows hasn't already done it for you. The strange part comes now with initially pairing the controllers to your PC. Since the PlayStation Move service hasn't had an update in a couple of years, the new Windows updates since then have broken the regular way of pairing controllers, so pairing the controllers normally through the PSMove config tool will not work like in all the tutorials. 
Of course though, I have a way around this which will allow us to manually handshake the controllers with the PC. This is the tricky bit, so pay attention. First, close any PSMove applications you may have open at the moment, then go to the GitHub link in the description for the PSMove API and download it. Extract it to the folder we have everything else in, open it, and you should see the following folders inside. Bin, bindings, include, and lib. Open the lib folder and copy everything inside into the bin folder. With that done, we can begin the pairing process. Open the start menu and type in cmd and it should show the command prompt in the search. Go to the right here and start it as administrator, then it should open with the first line saying c windows system32. Now that you've opened that, go back inside the API folder's bin folder and click the top here of the file explorer and copy the file path. Go back to the command prompt window, type in cd in lowercase, hit space and then paste the file path we just copied and hit enter. This moves us into the PSMove API's bin folder, allowing us to use the utilities inside. Now, type in psmove.exe and hit enter. That should give us a list of all the commands we can use with this part of the API. Don't worry about everything else here, we're only interested in the manual pairing function, so get ready and I'll run you through it. First grab the appropriate USB cable, then grab a controller and use the cable to plug it into your PC. Now once it's connected, type in the command prompt psmove.exe space, pair, and then hit enter. Once you do, the program will find your connected controller and tell you it's safe to unplug it from the PC now, which you should do. Once you've done that, immediately start spamming the PS button on the controller like so, until the flashing status LED on the bottom remains lit. With that, a message in the command prompt window will say connection verified, which means the controller is now connected to your PC through Bluetooth, and the pairing process is complete. From now on, it will remember this PC as its parent device, allowing it to always connect to it with just a press of the PS button. All you have to do now is just PS Move pair each of the other controllers just like you did this one, and the controllers should all now be ready. I'd like to give a quick thanks here to Paul DX on this one because I didn't actually come up with this solution. He basically saved my ass with his at the time 500 view video, so here's to that one. All of the hardware should now be set up and connected. Now we just need to set up and calibrate the PlayStation Move service. Close all the other windows and navigate back to the PS Move Services bin folder. From here, open the PS Move Service Admin and boot up the PS Move Config tool. Hit Connect to hook the program into the PS Move Service Admin, and you should be met with this main menu here. First, go to Controller Settings, and your controller should appear alongside a list of options and other tools. Here is where we choose the color of the controllers as tracking LEDs and calibrate their internal sensors. So let's get to it. Firstly, you'll need to choose what colour the LED ball is going to be for each of the controllers so the cameras can track them and tell them apart. Just do that by clicking the drop down and selecting the colour for each controller, switching in between the controllers with the arrows at the top here. Try not to pick colours that are too similar to each other or your environment so the cameras don't mix them up by accident. My personal recommendation is red, green and blue, the primary colours of light because they're fundamentally very different. A point to make here also is if that your room is absolutely laden with LEDs, it could obviously cause tracking problems, so beware. Once you've chosen your colours, we'll move on to calibrating the internal sensors for each of the controllers. First what you're going to want to do is go down to filters and change the position filter down to pass through. Then go to orientation filter and change it to complementary MIRG. Both of these filters I've tested myself and give the best possible tracking that you can with PlayStation Move controllers, although you're free to experiment yourself. Next, go to the controller calibration drop down tab and we'll start with calibrating the magnetometer. What a magnetometer is, is a sensor that can determine the orientation based on the Earth's magnetic field, working essentially like a 3D compass. When you click calibrate magnetometer, you'll be met with this UI. Now, grab your controller, move to the center of your play space and begin moving it in figure eights like so. You'll see the controller plotting points in a sphere around itself on the screen and you'll basically want to fill as much of that in as possible. The software will say 100% complete at some point, but ignore that and just fill the gaps to make sure it's done properly. Now once you're satisfied, don't click anything just yet and find a level surface like a desk or a table to put your controller down on like so. Make sure the trigger is pointing in the forward direction of your play space, keeping that the same for each controller, then leave the controller completely alone now and go and click OK to move to the next stage of calibration. The controller will now measure the still magnetic field and save it, allowing it to remember which way it's pointed at all times. It should now open a test window with the controller on the screen. Now pick up your controller and rotate it, and you should see the one on the screen mirroring its motion. You can use this to check if the calibration looks good. Then click OK and it should take you back to the controller settings menu. Switch to the next controller and then do the same again for it and then the final controller. When all the magnetometers are calibrated, we can move on to calibrating the gyroscope. All you have to do here is put the controller on a level surface like before with the trigger pointing in the same forward direction. 
Then leave the controller alone again and back under the controller calibration tab, click the calibrate gyroscope button. The software will check if the controller is still and if it is, it will sample which way is down with gravity. And once that completes, it's fully calibrated the gyroscope. Click OK and it should bring you to another test window like before. Check if your controller seems to be rotating normally and then click OK again which should take you back to the controller settings menu. Do that again for all of your controllers like with the magnetometer and they should be ready to go. Now the only thing left we have to do is to calibrate the cameras or the trackers as the software calls them. So go back to the main menu then click on tracker settings. What we're going to do here is calibrate each of the cameras to the controllers as colors so they can be picked out and tracked accurately. So. Put your controllers in the play space so all of the cameras can see them, then back in the software, select your first tracker or camera, then select one of your controllers here. When you've done that, click on Calibrate Controller Tracking Colors. You should now be met with the video feed of the chosen camera along with some settings menus along the sides. The tracking bulb of the controller you chose should also have lit up and you should be able to see it on the camera. Don't worry that the view has low exposure and is really dark, this is intentional to make it easier to pick out the bright light of the controller against the dark background more easily. If you don't immediately see your controller in the view here, don't panic. It's probably behind one of the menus or it's just at the wrong angle to the camera, so just move it around until you see it. Before we start, you'll want to make sure that the FOV setting in this menu here is set to blue dot, because if you remember before, that's what we set the lens of the camera to and the software has to know that. After that, the only setting you should touch or need to worry about is video filter mode. The different modes here are BGR, which is the raw unfiltered feed of the camera, then HSV, which we won't be using but is here, and Masked, which shows us the pixels that the camera is filtering out and detecting as our controller. To calibrate the color of the controller, make sure that the filter mode is set to BGR so we can see the bulb unfiltered, as it can carry over from each other calibration. Make sure the controller is visible to the camera, then move your mouse over the bulb in the camera's preview and then right click the middle of it to sample its color. Now changing the filter mode over to masked mode, you should be able to see the filter in action only showing the pixels of the controller's tracking bulb. Once you've done that for one controller, go back to the tracker settings menu, keep the same tracker but move on to the next controller and do the same as you just did for the last one. Once you've done that, go back to tracker settings once more, switch to the final controller and calibrate that. Once that's done, go back to the tracker settings menu again, move on to the next tracker this time, then calibrate each of the controllers again for this one, exiting the calibration menu in between each one. Do this until all of the controllers have been calibrated once each for all of the trackers. The exiting to the tracker settings menu in between each controller is actually quite necessary. There are some issues with calibrations not saving when switching the controllers and trackers inside of the color calibration menu, so doing this just forces the program to save that particular calibration, so then you're safe to move on to the next one. With that said, also don't touch the exposure, frame rate or color settings of the cameras if you don't have to. This program is built to run best around the default settings and messing with them can have nasty knock on effects. With that done though, all we have left to do now is calibrate the PS Move play space for the controllers to move around in. What you'll need for this is a flat surface of sorts like a coffee table or a stool, then put it in the center of your play space in view of all of your cameras, then you'll want to print out this calibration diagram onto an A4 piece of paper and secure it to the top of the surface with tape or a paperweight so it doesn't move. Make sure it's facing in the same forward direction as before as well. Now, from the tracker settings menu, choose a controller and then click on compute tracker poses with controller. This menu then should come up with a view from one of your cameras again. What we'll be doing here is calibrating the cameras' positions here in the room by putting the controllers down in order on the numbered points on the pattern. The cameras will then recognize this pattern and be able to calculate their position in space, so they can then work together to track the positions of the controllers around the room when you're using them in VR. Let's get this started. Check the paper and you should see the markers labeled 1 through 5. Take note of where they are. Go back to the software and check if all of the cameras are there by cycling through them with these buttons here. And if everything is in place, start the calibration by hitting looks good. It should now prompt you to take your controller and put it down on the first marker. Place it on its end like this and leave it. The software should detect that it's been put down and will automatically start sampling. All of the cameras will be sampling the controller at the same time, so make sure your head isn't blocking one. When they all complete, the software will then automatically prompt you to move the controller to the second marker, which you should do, being careful not to move anything. The software will also detect this on its own too, and when you place the controller down, it will automatically begin sampling again. Just keep doing this for the rest of the markers until it's done. At the end, it should pull you into another menu, showing each camera in its place, and the controller you're calibrating actually being tracked by those cameras around the newly calibrated play space. If the controller looks like it's pointing and rotating in the wrong direction, all you have to do is hold it horizontally in the forward direction from before and hit select on the side of the controller. 
This will recalibrate the forward direction of the controller to be facing the correct way, which should fix your issue. All you have to do now is go back to the tracker settings, switch the controllers, not the trackers, and just do the same thing again for the other two controllers. Once you've done that and everything is looking smooth, massive congratulations to you. You've gone through the difficult part of this tutorial and everything from here on should be much more simple. We're almost ready. The PS Move service is now working and it's tracking each of your controllers in 3D space. All we have to do now is get them into Steam VR. The PS Move service doesn't natively support Steam, so we'll need one more piece of software to translate the controller positions into Steam VR. This piece of software will be Connect to VR, or as I call it, K to VR. It may have Connect in the name, but it also thankfully has a PS Move service mode, which just straight up emulates Vive trackers and passes through the PS Move controllers' tracking data to them. I've chosen this over Driver 4 VR, not only because it's free compared to the £15 you'd have to pay otherwise, but it actually provides much better ease of use and massively improved tracking compared to Driver 4 VR. To install K2VR, go to their website linked in the description and click on the Get Started button. Continue through the pages while paying attention to what is written until you get to the page with the link to download the K2EX installer. Download the installer and then run it. If this window pops up blocking the install, don't worry, because K2VR isn't actually dangerous to your PC. It's just the software is unsigned by the creator and your PC got a little overexcited at that. Just click more info and then click run anyway to get past that. The installer should now open and it should look like this. Just click begin installation and then choose the PlayStation Move option since that's what we're using. Then click download and install and let it do its thing. Once it's done its thing, do just as the installer recommends and restart your PC. Once your PC is back on, I would recommend creating desktop or taskbar shortcuts for both the PS Move Service Admin and the new Connector VR app for easy access in VR. These are the two programs you're going to be running while using Full Body, so it's best to keep them close at hand like this. Once you've done that, everything for the first time setup is done, and you shouldn't have to touch it again other than for occasional recalibration. Now that we're getting to the part where we actually use the controllers, let me quickly show you ways of attaching these awkwardly shaped things to your body. The best way of attaching these controllers to your body is getting some cheap track strap alternatives from Amazon or eBay, then attaching the controllers to them in any way you see fit. This is the easiest and most painless method because the track straps are comfortable and are already purpose built for full body, and with just a little effort they can be ready for action in no time. The only pain point is that they're an added cost on top of everything else. You can use shoes, belts or anything else DIY if you really want to cut that cost, but I would heavily recommend against that and just biting the bullet if you're serious about using these for long periods of time. Moving on, every step going forward from now on is basically what you'll be doing every time you want to boot up your full body tracking for regular use in SteamVR. That process goes as follows. Open up SteamVR and then boot up the PS Move service admin. Then finally, open up Connect to VR, and the first thing you'll want to do is click Spawn Trackers, which should then spawn the three emulated Vive trackers inside of Steam VR. Now, head over to the Options tab, and you can also set it to initialize trackers automatically on opening the program, so you won't have to do it every time. Now that we're here though, the first thing to do is click Run PS Move Handler. Now go down to the right here and hit Refresh so the controllers pop up in the boxes for each tracker. This connects the software to the PS Move service and allows it to use the controllers. You can change these around to get your preferred controller for each body part, or leave it because it doesn't actually matter. At this point, you should check inside your VR headset to see if the trackers that spawned in the middle of your playspace are moving. To get the controllers moving around our playspace sensibly, we have to calibrate them to our VR headset's playspace so they can stay in sync. So back on the Connect to VR main menu, click Begin Calibration. The calibration is done inside of VR, so you should put your headset and PS Move controllers on now. You should see the controllers moving about as you move them, but offset in the middle of your play space because they're not calibrated yet. If said movement is actually delayed and laggy, just end the PS Move service admin with Task Manager and restart it until it catches up. But if everything's looking alright, what you need to do now is use the inputs on your VR controllers to quickly move the trackers into the correct position. Check the connector VR window for the controls on your particular headset. What you want to do is put one of your controllers on your hip strap and then raise the hip tracker to that height. Then you're going to want to move your controllers roughly into place and then rotate around to test if you and your controllers rotate around the same center. Once you've done that and you're happy with how your trackers are positioned, complete the calibration by clicking both of the triggers together twice. For brevity, hit save settings in the Connect to VR window. And finally, make sure all of your controllers are calibrated to the forward arrow in the Steam VR play space, which should be visible in the Steam VR home. And there we have it. The PlayStation Move service and your controllers are successfully being tracked within Steam VR. Now I'll just leave you with a few important tips before you hop into your favourite games, which is probably just VRChat, let's face it. I'll promise you'll want to listen to these, especially if you're using a Quest or a Rift S, which I'm guessing is actually probably most of you. 
This full body solution does come with the regular abnormalities that comes with full body tracking on inside out tracked headsets. That being the place based decalibration that occurs when leaving the Oculus Guardian and making your headset go into safe mode, or taking your headset off and letting it go into sleep mode. Don't worry. Even Vive trackers actually have this issue, but because of the different nature of the PlayStation Move service, you can't exactly just fix it on the spot, other than rewaking your actual headset in the exact position it went off in. The best solution to this is to actually stop the headset from doing it in the first place. The first thing you can do is actually draw your Guardian intentionally larger than the actual play space that you're going to be in, or where you're actually going to be in your room in VR. Then, before calibrating Connect to VR, make sure that the arrow in the Steam VR Home is pointing in the forward direction by waking or resetting your headset in that direction. And finally, place a bit of tape on the proximity sensor inside of your headset that makes your headset go to sleep once you take it off. When doing this, you'll have to be cautious of your surroundings, obviously, because your Guardian's not going to be protecting you as much. And Quest users' batteries may suffer a little from this if you're in and out of VR all the time and it's wasting battery doing that. But it should fix the issue of your trackers unsyncing themselves in the middle of using them with a Rift S or Quest. Those of you with any flavour of outside in tracked headset though, like a Valve Index, a Vive or a Rift CV1, you won't actually have to worry about this, because your play space is fixed in place by your base stations, and won't change after calibration. Now the last thing I want to talk about is actually charging these controllers. It can be quite annoying, because for the controllers to charge through the USB port on the bottom, they need to actually be plugged into a device that can provide a data connection for some reason. So a PC or something similar while it's actually on, not off. So if you want to charge your controllers overnight, you have to leave your computer on overnight as well. So that means your controllers actually won't work with regular USB wall adapters, because Sony says so and that would be too easy, I guess. You can get away with the regular cables plugged into your PC if you want to, since that's what I've actually been doing for the 8 or so months I've been using them. If you're going to be a heavier user of them than me, which is actually going to be quite easy, you may want to invest in a charging dock if you don't want this octopus of controllers hanging off of your computer at all times. Although this is somewhat negated by the immensely long battery life that comes with these controllers. With that said though, any other issues you may have will be covered in the troubleshooting playlist down below. If you can't find an answer to your question in there, don't be afraid to ask in the comments down below, and I'll try my best to answer them and document them for everyone else. I've seen many other PlayStation Move service tutorials, but not many actually focus on its potential with full body tracking. So I hope this video can help show more people that this is actually an option. One that I actually believe to be the best in terms of tracking quality for the money. But don't think that this is the last you'll hear from me either, especially when it comes to custom VR technology. I've already started on a custom haptic vest, finger track controllers, and something even as crazy as buying an old Oculus Rift for next to nothing that's broken, and using that for full body tracking as well. If any of that interests you at all though, subscribe and stay tuned for more in the upcoming weeks. And if you found this video useful or interesting at all, leave a thumbs up, I would massively appreciate that. All I have to say to you now is I hope you enjoy your brand new, room scale, PlayStation Move based full body tracking. Thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. I'm a slave to the content. Oh, my life. Oh, you did it. I did it.